a rough, you know, prisoner kind of exterior. Yes. Um, Charlie suggested that we did. Uh, one of the girls that was on the corner had left, and he was quite upset and said that because she had left and not shaved her head, that that meant thousands of people wouldn't be saved. And so, you know, when he said to do it, I didn't want to be held responsible for thousands of more people not being saved, so I did. And the same with the X, you know, I, I really don't have any idea at all. He said it was because we were Xing ourselves from society. Yes. The scar is, I, uh, huh? Uh, sort of, but it's not real clear anymore. I'm going to have it removed whenever uh, I can get, you know, plastic surgery. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you can. Can you? Yeah. I, I honestly believe, you know, uh, it took me a good two years to even um, begin to uh, realize what had happened and what I had been through. To, uh, it took years to be able to start uh, sorting out my mind and my thoughts and putting things in their proper perspective. And then at one point, I was able to start writing a couple of the women that were out. This was about three years ago. And I, I was still thinking that I was... Uh, believing like they were and it wasn't until I wrote them a few letters that I realized how much I'd grown from it and then reading you know their their philosophies and things I, I couldn't even relate anymore I I had to quit writing them I couldn't I couldn't uh, I couldn't reach them with where I was at and they were feeling very cheated that I no longer was uh, co-signing their little uh, beliefs I, uh, it's been a very um, hard fight for me. I, I've uh, worked hard to try and answer things that I thought uh, or have been extremely painful for me. Uh, like I say, I was very lucky that I had a really good psychiatrist that came around a lot. And I think that I've put myself back together, you know, pretty well. I feel good about myself now. And, uh, that whole year of living with him and the year of the, of the trial, it's, it's hard for me to even uh, uh, see myself there any longer. You, huh? No, I'm done. Oh yeah, she lived at the ranch. No, I didn't. Uh, before that, uh, they had been sending letters in to the institution, which I wasn't receiving because I had, you know, written out a slip saying I didn't want to hear from them ever again. And they were getting uh, angry, and they called up one of the attorneys and said, uh, Sandy and Lynn, and, oh, Squeaky Frome and Sandra Good. Yes, they were angry at me because I, I was uh, not, you know, actively co-signing things that they were doing. They knew, they knew that I wasn't being with them anymore. And they uh, called up one of the attorneys, and I was still in isolation at the time. And they said that uh, they knew if they did things that it meant that I would stay in isolation. And if I didn't, you know, make movements to... Uh, show my loyalty to them, they would continue to do things to make sure that I never got out of isolation. So I figured something was happening, but uh, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what they had in mind or that it was going to happen. No, I don't think that I was that important to her, but, uh, I figured something was up when they were so um, adamant.
adamant about us, meaning myself and the other co you know, my co-defendants, uh, co-signing themselves, it almost got to be a trend that if there was something that ugly was going to happen, that suddenly they'd involve the three of us, you know. So, uh, I, th I don't know why she did it, and I don't know, uh, she said she did it for the Redwoods, but, you know, I don't know. And, uh, I, you know, I didn't know she was going to do it. Not that she would do that particular act, but um, I felt that the uh, certain authorities thought something was up because all of a sudden uh, I was receiving all of these letters that were really uh, kind of uh, demanding that I get in touch with them. Oh, yeah, they, they went through my mail. Um... I feel glad that we're all separated, and I I hope that uh, they too will, will be and are able to uh, sort out their lives. Well, I I really want to eventually just be able to have my own complete life with a a new name and uh, just be able to. Uh, not have to be reminded of it and I you know I don't have a desire to be in touch with anyone that I knew then in the future yes I I think that each of us you know is working to Yes. I, I said that because um, I couldn't, my mother and I, it's, you just can't tell your mother you're never going to, you know, be free. I, I said that more for her to have hope than uh, actually believing it. We have a very good relationship. My mother has come to visit me every week for seven years now and uh, we've gotten extremely close and my father lives out of state so I see him a couple times a year he stayed in LA until my trial was over and then he moved out of state uh, I have a very close family ties now and uh, they've all been extremely supportive but they haven't been uh, weak to me either uh, I'm talking about like in the uh, in my early years of confinement they were uh, very strong and uh, at times very hard on me to help me you know get my my thoughts situated again it's you know it's it was a very uh, they're they're really wonderful people I know that, that there are many that feel that way, and uh, I can understand their feelings. If I'm released or if I am given parole, it will be because um, I feel like with this new trial, I feel like now I will be able to go back and uh, tell the truth which I, I didn't then because in my opinion the courtroom was just a follow-up of the crimes you know Charlie was conducting the courtroom uh, 
Well, he was telling us what to say, you know, uh, when to stand up, you know, when to carve the X, when to shave our heads. Every day it was like a new agenda on what we should do for the day. Um, for the people that feel that I should, I feel like if I am released, it will be because I deserved it. And if I'm not, then I, you know, I'll be able to handle that also. Then I go back to the institution and I, I try for parole and uh, continue my, you know, uh, life at the institution. He was, uh, he presented himself to be a very free person that was free of a lot of inhibition. And for many of us, we were brought up in a regimented type, uh, middle class, uh, you know, background. Uh, with the acid, we were regressing into uh, younger years of wanting to play in the dirt practically and wear flowers and all that kind of thing. He was almost at times like a Pied Piper. When I first met him, he was different than when the crimes were committed. But it happened in a slow, a slow evolving. And like I say, it's only been since I've been able to sit back years later and analyze, you know, what it was myself that I can speak like this. But he had a a way with words, um, he could be completely unpredictable, and he'd use that in different ways. He like would have each one of the people at the ranch thinking the way he wanted them to, and if someone needed a compliment to be dependent on him, then he would compliment that person. If another person uh, always wanted to feel like they wanted to be accepted, he would put them down so they would try harder to be accepted. Uh, it was, you know, like I've tried to think, did he have like a superpower or, you know, was it some, something else? And really, I just think that he was just a really good con artist and he didn't have that heart of material to con when you've got a lot of uh, young children that are uh, dropping acid all of the time. Their minds are like, you know, clay anyway, so. Uh, that was mainly, but for, for myself, the attraction was like uh, his, he, he always emanated a certain amount of freedom. Towards the end, it wasn't, you know, he became uh, more intense and uh, he would shake more and he was more quick-minded, or quick-tempered, I mean, and uh, then when the, he always said too how he uh, believed in truth and he represented truth and uh, once we went, went to court, suddenly we were supposed to start changing things, and that kind of surprised me, too. It, uh, it sh started to show another side of him. The only thing that I really could never answer is whether Charlie really believed what he told us himself or if he just did it as some say as a revenge against, you know, the system. I, I, I never would know that. No. Yes, it was supposed to. Um, it was supposed to cleanse the whole world, and I, I honestly believe that. <clears throat> no, it's very real to me. It's very real to me at night when I'm uh, <clears throat> alone in my cell with my thoughts and. It's at that point that I, I don't try to block it out. I think that that's part of the, <coughs> excuse me, I think that's part of the uh, hell that I'll have to live with forever. Uh, I, I work regularly on um, develop, developing a certain amount of